In today's tutorial, I'm going to be breaking down eight ways for you to be able to create distressed looks on your wood pieces. Now, our first four are more of like hacks, so to speak. We're going to be faking the distressed look without using chemicals or tools, and they don't necessarily have to be on a wood piece. So for our first four, I'm going to be using these to give you guys those ideas. Let me go over what we're going to be using. This is a little Dollar Tree piece and it is plastic, okay? I wanted to show you guys that you do not have to use wood for the first four because we are doing faux, fake, hack-ish <laughs> type distressed ideas for these pieces, okay? And you do not have to have wood for these. Now we are still gonna do it on a piece of wood because I want you guys to see that, you know, options. I like options, you know, and why the hell not? Now, I do also want to show you that this is just like a little piece cut out. I bought this from Christmas tree. I just painted over it. Okay. It's not anything special. It's just a little piece of wood cut into a house. These are little MDF pieces. I think I picked up from Walmart or Hobby Lobby. I spray painted them a long time ago. These things have seen better days and I figure we're just going to use this to create a nice little decor piece and this little plastic piece is just going to help you know that you can take these first four ideas and apply it in several different ways using several different types of materials. For our first distressing we're going to bring in the sharpie. <laughs> I know I know listen sharpie brandy you've seen it okay it's it's a faux distressing. It's also an easy way to distress. Now, if you're not sure what distressing is, distressing is defined as weathering by hand, using chemicals and tools to add imperfections to aid your wood. I try to limit the amount of chemicals I use on a normal basis. And if I can avoid sanding and things like that, I always do. And that's because people got health problems. My mother is a cancer survivor, lung cancer survivor. My daughter has chemical issues when she uses chemical materials. If I used Lysol cleaning sprays back in the day, I try to be as natural as possible. So I've actually picked up some of these hacks over the period of me doing DIYs and building my brand and my business and my reselling to try to avoid having to expose myself, even though I wear the face mask and the eye, it's still over time as the years go on and the years go on, it's still just not a good idea to constantly expose myself to those things. So I'm always looking for better ways to accomplish looks. With that being said, we're still going to go over all of them in this video. In case you have never seen this done before, actually, I don't like the angle of this camera. Hold on a second. There we go. A little bit better. I'm trying to hide my Christmas stuff over there. It's Christmas time. I don't know what day or time of the year you're going to be seeing this video that you're looking for distressing information, but I'm trying to hide that over there. <laughs> so this little piece is plastic. Okay. And I'm just going to take this and we're going to just go around and add some of that light distressing. And we're going to do that on all three of these pieces. So I'm just going to kind of pop in some music here for you guys so you guys can watch me do this. Easy enough, right? Some cute little accents just to kind of age the pieces. So this is our first little distressing hack. 
And that's it for our first one. Cute, right? I'm gonna put a little reveal up here so you guys can look at these. I love how easy and simple this is. It gives just a little bit of something. And if you do not wanna work with tools and you are not that good with paint and things like that, this is simple and you can have your projects done in a matter of minutes. This next distressing technique is something that I use all the time on my channel. It is the crusty bit paper. <laughs> so if you're a crafter or a DIYer, you probably have a bunch of paintbrushes laying around that are just old and crusty and have seen better days. This is actually mild. I've been doing a really good job of taking care of my paintbrushes lately. This was for a time one of my favorites to use, but it is so crusty at this point. They're just really sticking together. So I'm not going to use that. I'm actually going to trash that today. And we're going to just use one of these. I think I'll use this one. Okay. And I'm going to use... I want to use a different paint so this way you guys can see the different colors. Let me go pick a paint. I'm going to use this green, this little ivy green color. So all I'm going to do for this is just put a little bit down on my surface over here. And you guys can't see that it's off the camera. But I'm going to just show you how I'm just kind of dabbing the crusty bits of this paintbrush. Just the tip. Okay, and then we're going to just drag it on our piece. And that's all we're going to do for this. And it is going to give us a distressed look. It is super easy to do this. Now, I'm using acrylic paint on this. I don't necessarily recommend using acrylic paint on plastic. But for the sake of the video, I am just doing what's easy. But I am telling you the proper thing to do is chalk paint. If you're going to use a distressing method on plastic, chalk paint, okay? It will hold better. But just see how it just slides on down. And you can create this the same way when these pieces, it works so well. Look at that. It looks so amazing on wood pieces. I absolutely love doing this on wood. It's a little slippery. That's why I said like chalk paint definitely works better. I don't know why I grabbed acrylic. I just seen the color. I was like, green, it'll go good. But there we go. Just a nice little way to distress. And this is easy too. And it usually turns out super amazing. And you can just take the brush and just go around the edges as quickly and fast as you want. And it is super, super quick when you're trying to just distress the edges or make something super easy. This works so great. As a content creator and I'm constantly crunching for time, this is definitely my favorite way. I'm not a huge fan of how it turned out on the slick surface right here, but at the end of the day, it still works. This next one I actually learned on TikTok. And you just put some of whatever color on a piece of wood, and then you're going to use the piece of wood to scrape your distressed look. For this one, I'm actually going to use some Dixie Belle chalk paint. Like I just said, with us using the acrylic paint, I was just looking for color this time. I'm like, let me find me a dark. I don't have any black chalk paint, but I do have lots of Dixie Belle. So I'm going to just get a little bit of this. And I'm going to just paint it on our little wood piece here. I'm just going to paint it around the edges. And you're just going to take this and scrape it on along your project. Drag the whole piece along. And I'm going to just do this for our piece of wood too. Oh, did I get, where are these sparkles coming from? Why? <laughs> like there's a little magic fairy flying around in here. Well, sure the shit didn't clean up no messes around here, but there are sparkles everywhere. Okay, I loaded it up. Now we're just gonna kind of drag it down this. It works so much better on the wood. Look at that, so pretty. And that quick, you're done. Boom. Distressed. 
You can go around the edges as much as you want. But this was one of my favorite out of all year long, all the hacks and all the things that I've seen on the internet and learned. This is one of my favorites. I don't use it enough, but look at that. I really need to use this technique more often. I love how it turned out on the wood pieces. Not too crazy about the shiny part, but I like the options. One of my absolute favorites is gelding wax. And you can also, this comes in so many different colors. This is a Dixie Belle product. You can get these in other pro in blah, blah, blah. <laughs> other brands. But you, this is easily accessible to me. Dixie Bell is not always, I actually have a vendor five minutes from my house. So I always have some type of Dixie Bell. But for this stuff, you just put a little bit on your finger and you, you, if you can get this in like gorgeous colors, like the rose and the coppers, this is so much more than just something that you can use to add distressing. You can use this to add accents, gorgeous stencils, all kinds of things. I use this stuff for so flipping much. But just take a little bit on your finger and then just rub. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It, it always shows up the best on wood. But like I said, the first couple of these, I'm just kind of giving you guys options. And then we're going to get down to business. Y'all know I get serious with my wood, so I wanted to save the best for last. And we're going to bring out some old little gems that if you've been following my tutorial series, you will not be surprised to see these pieces of wood again. I feel like you can just not go wrong with this technique on any surface. I like it on the shiny surfaces. It just goes really, really well with everything. This was one of my first, first tutorials I did. And I told you guys you were going to see these again because I had another reason for creating them the way that I did. So this is a easy way to paint on weathered looks to wood. What I want to do now is create an even more distressed look with these to age them more, kick this up a notch, and show you guys techniques for that. One of the things I had people comment on in the video was, do I use candles or soap to age and yes you can we're going to actually do that to distress this piece and we're going to bring in our candle look at this y'all it says candle bougie that says bougie right <laughs> i'm probably pronouncing that wrong anyhow it's brand new it's a little um like i said i actually do not and you don't see me make candle candles a lot on this channel because they have a lot of chemicals in it. And what people don't realize is when you burn candles, they actually let off carcinogens. I, um, when I was in college and doing a study, we actually did a study on that. And I try to use just candles for decorative purposes. If I do make candles, I use natural beeswax. Hold on a second. I'll grab it. And I use natural wicks. And I also use natural essential oils. All essential oils are not created equally, people. So if you are not familiar with that and you pick up essential oils from Walmart and Dollar Tree, they may be more fragrance friendly than they are earth friendly. I don't know how to say that properly but some essential oils are actually homeopathic and they're good for you to breathe in and they have natural properties where they help you with different things i lean towards those and those types of brands one is young living another one i've used is called revive i try to stay away from anything that's just a fragrance essential oil if i am creating candles to actually use so while you guys are kind of like, Brandy, what are you telling on me all this for? Because I showed you my candle. <laughs> I don't want 
want you guys to judge me because this is the kind of candles I keep in my house. I don't really look. It's legit not the only one. Okay. <laughs> it just, I just wanted to show you like it really is this and you know why I don't have other candles lingering around because I don't burn them. To distress this, I'm just going to rub. Now, if you guys know who Crafty Kathy is, oh, I just look what I did, man. Do you guys know who Crafty Kathy is? If you guys aren't familiar with Crafty Kathy, she has a booth. And she sells pieces and she is constantly thrifting and flipping and doing beautiful stuff. She has amazing DIYs that she does with candles. Now, I'm just going to get in here and just kind of <laughs> different sections. And we're going to go over this like this. And then we're going to distress our piece with our wonderful wax. And you can do the same thing with soap, too. I definitely feel like the candles work a little bit better, um, but mostly I rarely use this technique. I've probably used it twice in my life. I'm just going to keep this super simple because all I'm doing is giving you guys the idea. We're just going to take some antique white and we're going to paint this on to our piece of wood and let that dry. Once your paint is dry, you can do a few things. I'm gonna do two. <laughs> We're gonna use some duct tape or packing tape. And you can just put it on your piece and just kind of rub where, you know, you put your wax. And then it's gonna kind of peel up. See how it's just peeling it off? It's gonna peel it right off because you put your wax on there. And it stopped the paint from completely adhering in those spaces and this is super easy you know tape it on up just i feel like that you guys ever use tape i'm telling you like when i can't find my lint brush and i got dog hair on me i give my daughter a piece of pack of tape i'm like here get this off me It's so pretty. I love this. This is so, so pretty. And then another way is you can bring in your... Oh, I done lost it. Here it is. You bring in a little chisel. And you can kind of just scrape down and look at that. It just pulls off the wax, you know. And this is all the wax that we put on here. This comes off it's really pretty it's a really really I like this so much better than the next one we're about to do I do not care for the next one using this technique is probably going to give you one of the most genuine aged looks I love this for this one, I used crackle paint on the very bottom. Okay, you can kind of see the, well, you can see it a lot, actually. <laughs> but, um, so we're going to come in with some Vaseline. Now, I do not like using this stuff, this method. This is not my preferred at all. But we're going to take this, and all I'm doing is just going to rub it around the edges of this. I lightly spray painted this outside and you can see where the Vaseline is. And you're just going to take a paper towel and you're just going to pull it back. See, it just completely comes right off. And it just stops it from really bonding at all to our wood. I actually have a project for this piece later, so I didn't want to over Vaseline it, but you guys can see where it's not on there. The reason I personally do not care for this method is it 
it's just too perfect for me, almost. It's like right where the Vaseline is, it's almost a straight line. That's kind of why I wanted to do it like this so you could see. Whereas if you're sanding or you're kind of smearing or dragging something, like if you're dragging the paint down, it's just not as perfect. Now, I mean, you can take a sander and go around and, you know, make this a little bit more. It's just too perfect for me. I like the candle wax. If I'm going to use one of those techniques, I like the candle wax or the soap way, way better. Some people may really love this option. It's just not one of my favorites. However, it gets the job done. This might be our easiest method. I'm going to take a little bit. Now you can put this in a spray bottle if you want. I just, my vinegar is on top of my fridge in a bottle. So I literally just see the imprint the bottle i just press this on the bottle i dump some vinegar in here and you're gonna take it to paint that you already have on there and you're just gonna and see how it's just starting to create that separation And mind you, this has cured so this has been drying for about a month and a little bit of elbow grease. It took me about five minutes to do. You can definitely see those three sections right there. How gorgeously this distressed it. Just aged this piece. All I love this piece already as it was. But this is absolutely beautiful. I love this technique when you're using several different colors and layers. And for our last and most common way, we're just going to bring out the same pieces of wood we had. Right here's get a good look. And we are going to just sand it down to distress our piece you can distress this as much or as little as you want i'm gonna do a little and then we'll do a lot okay why not right it's beautiful we're just gonna see what it looks like here make sure you're wearing your ppe so you're not breathing this in that's why i saved this one for last because it is going to make the biggest mess Here's a little bit we just kind of did around the edges. Okay, it's super smooth. And then here's what the other side looked like before we even did that. Now I'm going to do the whole piece and we're going to do a lot. We have kicked off most of it. Now I want to show you guys something else cool that I like to do too. So why not, right? We are um, going to just kind of create some gouges in here. See how nice and smooth this is? We're going to make it look more purposefully worn down. And we're going to take this and kind of bend in our sander in that spot. Now look at that. That's so gorgeous. You guys want me to seal this so you can see what it looks like once it's all sealed and got the pretty colors in there. I'm going to seal it and then I'll show it to you. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed these distressed ways, these little hacks. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to try any of these, what you guys thought of all this. And stick around to see what this looks like when I get it all done. Whether you're using some of the faux hacks in the very beginning of the video or you are going the extreme sanding like we did at the very end of the video, these looks are super easy to do and will give you a extremely nice look for distressing. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time.